Hi, Gary. How are you? Hi, Chris. Very well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Now, I know during COVID, you haven't really just been sitting around doing nothing, have you? You've actually been literally out and about. Yeah, I've, I've, I've kept myself busy. Uh, as you know, Chris, I'm not one that can sit around and, and do nothing. I felt I had to get involved with something. Um, so uh, um, two of my clients uh, formed a, an alliance to uh, deliver food to hospitals. Uh, and uh, I, I joined up with them as a driver, borrowed um, another client's refrigerated uh, van um, and uh, spent um, a couple of months driving um, uh, prepared food to uh, London hospitals. What one in particular, Northwick Park Hospital up in Harrow. So it kept me, it kept me going, kept me, kept me uh, busy. I felt I had to do something. So. And Northwick Park has been obviously the one that's been most in the news. What was that like? Uh, yeah, it was uh, a, a busy, a busy place. I mean, I would uh, get there lunchtime, um, sort of three, uh, three up to four days a week, um, delivering the food into the uh, ICUs. Um, and uh, for the theatres and yeah it was um when the pandemic you know i joined right at the height of the pandemic um and it was a a pretty busy place there and it, it eased off towards the end so uh, but it was it was something I, I wanted to do in it and it kept me busy it kept me uh yeah kept kept, kept my mind free oh, that's good and how's COVID, and how's the whole period whole period of covid been for you Whew, uh, a challenge, um, I, I think, for anyone in hospitality and recruitment. Um, you know, if I look, I'm, I'm sitting in the office in London today. It's an, it's an empty office. All of my staff are, are furloughed. Um, and, you know, like, like everyone else, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate and navigate a way through this. Um, and we're all looking for answers and a, and a way to really, you know, find a, find a path to get through, the, you know, through this period. I mean, one of the lovely things I always think about you, and we just chatted about it before, is that you never sit around. You're always trying to do something different. <laughs> and actually, yeah. you, you're quite regularly, literally, going back to the floor, aren't you? I am. I, I've, I mean, oh gosh, I mean, I'll come up with my, my, my dream as a, as a child. I, I've you know, always been around sport and football, etc. And I was never going to be good enough to play football. So uh, growing up, I stayed in a lot of hotels um, with my father and, and you know, I, I, I found a passion for hospitality and uh, studied, uh, studied a catering course and a chef's course and, you know, got into the kitchen. And, you know, to this day, I've still got that passion. Um, I wouldn't say I was ever a talented chef. I'm not naturally talented, but I, I do have the drive and the passion for it. And it, literally since my career started, I've always carried it on. Um, I've gone and done stages in, in London restaurants. I've been involved uh, with one of my clients who's got a business and I, I've been involved with them since day one. Um, I, I genuinely love it. I, I genuinely do enjoy putting some whites on and getting back to uh, back into a kitchen. Not sure what they'd say about me, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, well, I was going to say, you told me a lovely story about the, the 20, uh, 2012 London Olympics when you worked for Angela, didn't you? Yes, uh, I mean, through, through my business, um, we uh, introduced uh, Angela Hartnett to a group called the Smart Group. Uh, and as a, as a joint venture, they successfully won the, um, uh, the sponsors catering for the London Olympics. Um, I was buying my business partner, Matthew Collins, out at the time. And the, the recruitment market went very quiet during the Olympic period. So um, uh, I uh, decided to go and cook for, uh, for three weeks on the London Olympics. Um, with Angela and the, the smart team, um, which, which was the most incredible experience. Um, three weeks starting at seven in the morning, finishing 11, 11.30 at night. Um, the opening night and the final night, we literally did two 22, 23 hour shifts. But, but the most incredible experience. And although I was way out of my depth, I got to work with some fantastic chefs um and who've become clients and and friends and uh yeah really 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 interesting period and i believe in experiences everything i've done in my life has been about experiences and you know i'm not frightened to roll my roll my sleeves up and, and give it a go i mean the lovely thing is you know the reason why i want to do this interview mm. is you don't fit any box do you <laughs> and every, everyone loves to box people and i know you're a recruiter yeah. but you're not you're not just a recruiter and you're not just obviously guess when he goes back to the floor you've got friendships literally all across the spectrums yeah i mean i 
I've, I've been I've been really fortunate. I've had the most amazing career. Um, as, a, as I said, my, my dream was to be a footballer. That was never going to happen. I was nowhere near good enough. My late father was involved uh, and used to travel uh, with the team with Tottenham Hotspur. So when I was growing up, um, I got to travel and stay in the hotels with the team. So what, did you, what did your father do at Tottenham? Um, he did bits and pieces. He, he travelled with them, um, went, I'm sure, uh, varying games for them. Um, my father, uh, in his former life, played football himself. Oh, did he? Um, and his father had played as well. Um, but uh, weirdly enough, he was in... Uh, my, my father had a, a business in New Covent Garden Market. Um, and uh, so the football went around that as well. So, um, so yeah, growing up, I used to stay in hotels. And uh, Tottenham Hotspur in the, uh, in the 70s were, I think, were the first club to take someone to cook for their players. And um, it came to the early 80s. I, I was just studying at college. I got chatting to the guy that did their food. And, you know, I was, I was like, wow, you know, you travel with the team. And he said, well, actually, I'm leaving next year to travel around the world. Would you like my job? And um, so I, I, I got this part time job um, uh, as the, the team chef come steward, just wherever Tottenham travelled. I travel with them um, and incredible experience um, through, a, 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 through my father's connections. Um, I got asked to travel uh, with Arsenal. Um, I also travel with uh, Queen's Park Rangers a couple of times and just wherever the teams traveled, uh, travel with them. So um, yeah, I travel with Spurs in their, their heyday period, 83 to oh, what, 90, what was that like? What 90, was that like? 94. Yeah, uh, uh, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and, Arsenal, uh, I travelled with them from, gosh, uh, 84, 85 to 94, 95. So you, you got to see two different clubs, two different styles and, you know, uh, yeah, incredible experience. And, you know, I've been very, very fortunate, very fortunate. Uh, and you see, you see things from a different mentality and a different way uh, and, you know, sport and leaders and, you know, in, in sport, you have a lot of high achieving sportsmen that want to be the best. They will give everything to be the best. And to be around that, I, I, was, I was very, very lucky. Very lucky. Well, you've been very supportive of the work we've done with sports. Mm. And actually, I know from your own personal life, you have a whole range of top people that most people would love to meet as close friends. Yeah, again, um, again, I've, I've, you know, I've been lucky uh, through, through, you know, if I, if I go back to when I was a child grew, growing up, um, my father uh, knew the, the Tottenham captain very well, uh, Steve Perryman, in the, in the 70s. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got to know him and I'm still in touch with him today. Um, but from then travelling with the clubs over 10 seasons, um, you get to know different people. Uh, and, you know, they've, they, they stayed friends and it's, it's, it's been lovely, really lovely. Um, and, and again, know, you see things from a different, a different viewpoint. I was going to say, have they had an influence on your thinking? Julie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if I look at my friends, you know, and what they've been through to, to get to the top and play at the, my friends doing the football played at the highest level. Um, you know, I, I've, it's, it's rubbed off on me and I've, I've always wanted to push myself uh, and to try and do as much as I can and be the best I can. So, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it, it's been great. It's been great. Oh, that's impressive. Um, in terms of the managers, which one had the most influence on you during those years? Of interest? George Graham, uh, which, is, really? which is surprising coming from a Tottenham fan. I mean, I, I travelled with uh, Arsenal in that period where he took over um, and incredibly uh you know strong management style old style uh probably, you know it doesn't it wouldn't work in today's in today's game um but just how he got the best out of people and brought players maybe not the, the most um if you look at the, the teams that have won the leagues and stuff maybe, maybe not the best uh individuals but as a team incredible uh, so when, did you, when the, did you when did you stop working with arsenal then uh, I stopped travelling with Arsenal in 1994 uh, and Tottenham, yeah, 93, 94, around about the same time. My own career in recruitment was taking off. The travelling with the clubs was only ever a part-time job. So I'd, I'd already got into the recruitment industry well before that. Um, my own career was taking off and um, I decided then I'd, I'd done it for a number of years and it was, yeah, it was, it was time to concentrate on my own career. Okay, before we get on to that, so were you there? Were you there on that famous night in '89? Uh, do you know I, I, I turned down the 1989 <laughs> trip, and and it is it is actually one of the biggest regrets 
of, of my life. Um, I, uh, I also play uh, local Sunday football. And that same year, the club I played for um, had won the league. And that Friday night, the game when they won at Anfield was on a Friday night. And it was also our league's presentation. And I didn't want to miss that. I, I also, uh, I needed to give up a day's holiday. I didn't think Arsenal would do it. And I thought, being a Tottenham fan, I'm going to have a long journey home to some really <laughs> miserable players. Um, but as it, as it turned out, they won the league. I, you know, genuinely pleased for them. And um, in, incredible stuff. Uh, but it, yeah, a big regret, big regret. But apart from that, I mean, I've, I travelled to, to uh, Old Trafford. I've, I've sat on the bench um, at Old Trafford. Incredible experience. I've travelled to Wembley. I've, I've been on the pitch with the teams. A real, you know, I, I've been very, very lucky, Chris. Very, very lucky. Now, look, I've seen you at a lot of these sports players because you've been very kind to obviously introduce them to EP um, as the events we've been doing. And, it, and you always have a very close rapport. Is that what's made you good at recruitment? Is that why you love recruitment? Is it, you, you, become, you seem to be everyone's trusted confidant. <laughs> I don't know, really. Um, yeah. I, oh, God. The sports, how players, that was... sports players don't trust anybody for the sake of it. No. Um, and, and the one thing I've, one thing I've seen in sport... Um, there's a lot of acquaint a lot of acquaintances, uh, a lot of people that say they're friends, and you know people that drift in and drift out of you know other people's lives. And if I look back at my friends, we we've been friends for a long time. Um, my friends mean the absolute world to me. Um, so yeah, you know trust trust is a very important thing in sport in business. You know you you have to trust people. Um, and yeah, I'd like to I'd like to think my friends uh, trust me and I, I trust them. So. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. So, obviously, we're in hospitality. You can just move forward now. Obviously, we've got yeah. to rebuild as such. How do you see the future? I think it's going to be an interesting few months. Um, I think uh, we're coming into the, 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 the real tough period now. Everything we've, everything we've seen, the redundancies are, are taking place. Um, I think that will go on until September. Um, I then think we're going to have a, a two to, to three month period of very, very slow uh, rebuilding uh, up to the end of this year. I think the beginning part of next year will be slow. And then I think from the spring, hospitality will start to bounce back. Um, but I think we are looking at March, April time of next year before we see the, before we see the green shoots. So it's going to be about a nine-month period. I think it's going to be a nine-month period, uh, and uh, there's going to be a lot of pain right across the industry, as as we're seeing, as we're seeing now. And have you seen any changes? Have you noticed any changes in how people are looking at things during this period of time? Or as we come, um, yeah. I mean, as I say, I've been coming into the office two, three days a week, um, not doing any recruiting because there's been none to do. Um, but, you know, speaking to people I've known for a long time in the industry um, and, you know, taking ideas um, and uh, yeah, pe people are innovating. Um, I think the companies that innovate and look at how they can take their business forward will be the companies that will come out of here the quickest. You know, we look at the food service industry, we look at the food production industry and the delivery market, how that has changed. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think there'll be new opportunities coming out of this period. It's not all doom and gloom. Uh, and recruitment, do you think recruitment is going to change? I do think recruitment will change. Um, I think there will be consolidation uh, in the recruitment agency market. Um, I think companies will go to people they have the relationships with. I think that's going to be really important going forward, getting away. And, and you know, sadly, it was coming, uh, you know, sort of last year, early part of this year, the, the, you know, the hard sales and, the, you know, just, just pushing people into roles that we've seen um, in this market. I think that will, that will stop. Um, and I think it will be about business relationships and the people with those relationships will be the people to, to move forward. No, look, I agree on that. You know, I do as much. So how did you get into recruitment in the first place? <laughs> um, well, as I say, I, I was uh, uh, working as a chef uh, full time in London. Uh, I worked in, in contract catering um, in, in central London for a group that was taken over by the Compass Group. Um, so who was that? Um, it was a company called Bateman, who, uh, yeah. and I, I was at their flagship site at uh, IBM on the South Bank, um, which allowed me to work Monday to Friday and then travel 
with the football clubs at the weekend. Um, but I, 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 I looked into doing something more. I felt I could do more. Um, but what could I do? And um, uh, I, I approached a couple of uh, recruitment companies and got a bug for it and uh, had three or four interviews. And then finally, uh, one of the uh, big recruitment companies uh, gave me a chance. Um, uh, again, how I, how I came into it, I had a first interview with the company, which went really well. Uh, my second interview was an absolute disaster. Um, the, the interviewer asked me to give, give her an example of something where I hadn't given up. And I, I, I was 20, I was 21 years old. Um, I was sitting there and I'm trying to think on my feet and uh, gave her an example where I'd gone on holiday with my friends uh, to Mallorca and uh, I'd ended up in a, in a bullfight. And I'd, I'd finished up being attacked by a bull, which I had. And a year later, I'd, a year later, I'd gone back into the ring and tried it all again. And she was looking at me, thinking, "Is, is this guy for real?" Um, and over the course of the interview, I was trying to, I was nervous, um, and I caught a pencil holder on the side of the desk with my arm. The pencil holder catapulted over the top of the desk. I was in an open plan office. I panicked, got up to try and retrieve it, tripped over a Hoover behind the desk, and fell down a flight of stairs. So um, and that and. Uh, at the at the end of the interview, um, you know, the, I knew it hadn't gone well. Um, the interviewer said to me, "Thanks, we'll be in touch." And uh, a couple of days later, I got a rejection letter saying, "Thank you, but uh, you know, it's a no," which I I expected. I was going on holiday with my my, my then girlfriend, and we were going out to Greece. And um, there was an older couple on the plane next to us. We ended up chatting to them, uh, and uh, it turned out they were in the villa next door to us where we were staying. And uh, over the course of the week we were there, we got to know them. And um, I told her the story of my, uh, my, my interview and, and she laughed, didn't say anything. And then the day I was, uh, the day I was going home, um, she said, um, can I have a word with you? And she, did, did you really want that? Did you really want that job? And I said, oh, yes. Yeah, I did. She goes, OK. I said, but the, um, the woman who interviewed you, I'm her boss. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and oh, I, I, I got a break, a, a lucky break. Um, and worked for one of the big recruitment companies for uh, four years. I joined a headhunting company based in Hong Kong. For, uh, I worked for them for a year, um, uh, travelled out to Hong Kong, and then they opened their UK office. Got made redundant from there in 90, oh God, December 23rd, 1990. Um, went to an agency that recruits for recruiters and um, uh, joined uh, another big recruiting company, Reed, which was a family-owned business at the time and um spent nine very good years with them um so uh, yeah good good experience really good experience and when did you found your own business founded collins king in 1999 uh with uh, my uh, then business partner matthew collins matthew had worked with me at uh, at reed for a number of years um and uh yeah we uh you know the, the hospitality market as you know yourself, Chris, you were, you were around at that time as well. You know, it, it was growing. It was a real vibrant place in London. So um, we, we started the business, soon moved it to Covent Garden, where we were for 13 years, uh, and then moved to um, uh, Fleet Street, where we've been for the last seven years. Um, I bought my business partner, Matthew, out in 2012, uh, just before the Olympics, um, and have been running the business uh, with, the, with, the, with the team ever since. So it's quite a 21st birthday part, really, um, <laughs> if this year, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, it's next month. Uh, next month will be our 21st year in business. Uh, so uh, it, well, it's gone so quickly. It's gone so quickly. And what are your hopes now? What are you, I mean, obviously rebuilding. And then where, where do you want to see things go from here? I don't know. Um, I've always taken every, every day at a time, rather than try and plan out too far in the future. Um, uh, as, as I've said, my, my career has been very important to me. I'm not someone, I don't have a big family. I don't have a, you know, um, you know I haven't got to rush home to wife and kids or anything. So my, my career has always been important and the business has been very much me. And I, hence the reason I put so much into, you know, the, the business and, and the industry as a whole. I, I genuinely, genuinely enjoy being around it. And I've been involved with the Springboard Charity um, been involved with uh, Ace as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I just put everything into what I do. Oh, look, I admire you for that. And actually, I admire you for going to Fleet Street all the time because it's, it's almost been like a ghost town, hasn't it? It has. It has. I mean, those first uh, few weeks of uh, when the pandemic was at its height, I'd come into the office, you know, 
once, twice a week, and it was literally a ghost town. Everything boarded up. Things, I, again, I, I came in this morning, things are just starting to move again, um, but I think it'll be September before we really see people back in that city area. Uh, it, it, it's been eerie, very, very eerie, very eerie. It's actually scary to think we're talking about six weeks away to September, isn't it? We are, we are. But if we look at where we've come in the last six weeks, we have come a long way. Um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, things are starting to move again. Restaurants are, are reopening. Hotels are beginning to reopen. Obviously, the event sector can't, and there's certain parts of the industry can't. But we are starting to see a way back. It, it is tough, um, but things are beginning to move again, slowly. Cause, slowly. Yeah, cause you, you're telling me some quite positive stories coming from restaurants in the West End. Yeah, feedback, yes? yeah. I mean, from that first weekend, I've spoken to uh, a couple of my clients, uh, and that they've got uh, restaurants in uh, the sort of Soho, Covent Garden area, and they reported positive trade. Um, you know, slightly more than they expected. Um, but uh, we need to carry that on. Is it just the public coming back and wanting to get that? You know, right? You know, want to go back into restaurants and then back away again we need we need the positive stories to keep coming out we need people to go back um, i read at the weekend the story uh, in the press uh, tom kerridge where he had a number of diners not show up it's vital for our industry that people turn up if you make a booking they've got to turn up because that in, you know just the missing diners that could impact on jobs you know we, we need the, the hospitality needs the revenues to come back and to be able to rebuild again um, I think it's going to be a long process. I think landlords have got to come to the to the table. Um, I think that's going to be one of the biggest things to negotiate. Um, but things are starting to move, and it, it's not all negative at the moment. No, no, I, I agree on that. But Gary, thanks for your time today. Thank it's you. Great, it's great to speak to you. And I'd thank you. Really good chatting uh, to you. I look forward to carrying on working with you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Chris. Thanks. Sure.